today our talk is about like traditional preventive methods uh, which have been used I mean, in the past to protect people from uh, biological uh, biodegradation factors. Uh, the content of, of the talk is mainly about three points. Uh, the first one is about the meaning of biodegradation bio, uh, factors. The second is about traditional preventive methods of protecting papers. And finally, we have, we have a discussion. Uh, depending on our talk last, last week about looking to the, the whole picture or the whole process, which is about uh, book uh, manufacturing, uh, each stage of, of, of this stage, the craftsmen uh, or artists used some preventive measures uh, to protect their final uh, objects, if it's like a manuscript or a book or like uh, or any object. So you, you, they are using some tactics to, uh, hello, to reduce the degradation uh, in, in, in future. The meaning of that uh, biodegradation uh, factors is mainly about three main uh, factors, which is insects, fungi, uh, and bacteria. All these three uh, uh, elements affect uh, papers. We start with insects, which we have a lot of insects affects paper. It's cockroach and silverfish, and we have book lice. Uh, we have uh, termites, which uh, cause like uh, a severe damage to papers, especially in hot area, areas in North Africa or, or Asia. We have also uh, two families of uh, petals, Anubidia and Terbestidae, which is also like cause like a severe damage to paper. The second uh, factor is fungi, which uh, produce like pigment uh, production, which we call it in paper conservation, foxing. It's the color of the paper itself. Uh, or, or sometimes we call it like fungal pigments. Uh, there is three main uh, genera cause a uh, severe damage to, uh, to books and papers, specifically in, uh, in high relative humidities which is Aspergillus, Pencillium, and Dicotillium. Uh, the third element is bacteria. And this five, uh, uh, this five, five genera is the, is the most famous one that cause damage to the paper, uh, which mainly is like fragile and crack in, in, in the documents itself. There is many uh, reasons could like causes and spread the infection of, of, of biodegradation factors, uh, which start with dust, more ventilation, more lightning, high relative humidity, high temperature. Uh, if you have infected storage uh, devices, also could spread uh, the in, in infection in, in the area. Uh, some conservators use like. Uh, materials, it's also easy to spread the infectious in, uh, in the museums or libraries. Uh, for tra traditional preventive methods of protecting paper, uh, I divided them in three uh, categories. The first one is chemical treatment of paper itself, which you, you uh, directly use some materials in contact with the paper. The second one is using some uh, like uh, methods during the process of book binding itself. Uh, I call it binding preventive methods. Uh, the third one is uh, environment preventive methods, which is which is mainly about uh, making a free area or free environment from insects or. Or, or any stuff could harm a paper in environment or any museums. 
We will start with chemical treatment of paper, the first materials, which is a Chinese one. Uh, it is philodendron or a dye extracted from amur cork tree. Uh, it's called in China, in Chinese it's uh, hangabu. Uh, this material traditionally extracted uh, by boiling uh, the dried bark of uh, uh, amur cork tree in water many times, like three times, four times. Uh, there is some like uh, evidence of using this dye from the second and the third centuries, but we have a concrete evidence, which is a recipe uh, from uh, from the fifth century in a Chinese treatise book. Uh, this method was uh, widely or extensively used du during uh, Tang Dynasty and during uh, Song. Uh, dynasty in, in China. Uh, the material most which cause protection to paper, it's alkaloid materials, which is uh, perperine. Uh, this materials uh, proved significant uh, uh, antimicrobial uh, activity against bacteria and viruses and fungi, and it, it also has pharmacological activities. Uh, we have uh, like archaeological evidence about uh, these materials. Uh, in 1974, uh, 19, they found like uh, a wooden statue in, in, in some place in China, uh, and inside the chest itself, they found a, a, a group of papers. Uh, some of them was uh, were dyed, uh, dyed with a yellow dye and the others not. And when they analysis the samples, it, it was, they found this, uh, it's a philodendron uh, dye. Interestingly, they found uh, the, the whole statue was in, infected with mice and fungi. But interestingly, they found that it is only just the dyed paper with the yellow dye uh, philodendron is is in a good condition by comparing to the other. Uh, other. The most famous example of, of this uh, such a use is it's called Dan Hong Diamond Sayutra. Uh, it's a very large document uh, in, uh, in, in the British Library. The second material, uh, which is a black paper, this method had been invited during the Song Dynasty in China as well. And uh, it had been used by boiling the dried fruits of, of the plants in, uh, in the water and then dip the paper uh, in, in, in water. Uh, Piperine is al uh, also alkaloid materials. It makes a chemical substance which causes uh, protection to the manuscript. And this material, with modern scientific researches, proved that it has uh, antibacterial and antifungal and the insecticidal effects with modern research. research. Uh, the third material uh, is turmeric, which was, and this material had been used in, in, uh, in India. Uh, there is a specific part in India uh, they usually, uh, I mean, died every three folios of a, of a manuscript or a book. They died every three or four folio, folio with a turmeric one. And this one has uh, also uh, insect re repellent uh, activity. And it also has been, had been used uh, during the book binding process uh, via dyeing the cordis and cover clothes, clothes are as well. Uh, the fourth material regarding to the chemical treatment of paper is orpiment, uh, which is uh, arsenic material and used uh, extens extensively in, uh, in paper preservation in India uh, and China uh, and Nepal. 
uh, also uh, it had been used to correct uh, writing mistakes. If you dye a paper with uh, with uh, philodendron dye, it's a yellow one, so you need a yellow color to correct the, the writing mistakes, which is you was uh, uh, like an aqua solution uh, of uh, uh, ornament, and this material is ex is extremely uh, has uh, has extremely toxic uh, properties. Uh, the second uh, main uh, category in this talk is about uh, the binding preventive missiles, uh, which is usually uh, had been used by uh, adding some poisonous material uh, during the uh, binding process. It's mainly to the starch or uh, floor uh, paste. It is, has two sources. One of them is mineral uh, sources, which by using uh, red lead and copper sulfate. And the second one is like uh, plant sources by using two plants, wormwood and bitter apple. Uh, regarding to mineral sources, uh, red lead, it had been used during King Dynasty. Uh, and it's in a specific area, it's called, uh, it's called the Canton area. They have very interesting like style of, of, of binding uh, by coloring the end papers uh, inside both front and back covers with this, uh, with this materials. They make like aqua solution with, uh, with red lead and then as well the tip paper inside this aqua solution and, and, and the the color. Uh, and the second one is cover sulfate, which has been used in, uh, in India, uh, mainly to, like, to prevent or restrict uh, rodents attack. So they add the, the marine color uh, materials to the, the floor uh, paste and mix them together and using them during uh, uh, binding process. Uh, for the plant resources, uh, I found uh, these two plants had been mentioned by uh, North African book binders uh, during uh, second, uh, 12th and uh, 13th century by someone called David Shpili. He made a book about uh, book binding manufacture and he ad he give like some advice how to like to keep your like documents safe or your books safe and he suggest using the, uh, he suggest and he said that he, he was using these two materials the juice of, of warm wood juice and bitter apple and he was adding them to the starch during its cooking to prevent mainly termites Uh, for environment preventive methods, uh, these methods uh, depending mainly uh, on creating insect-free environment around uh, your documents or your book. Like it's, 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 it's a good idea to keep insects away before attacking the document itself. Uh, and had been used by two strategies, one of them like using uh, resistant storage devices like shelves or, or boxes and the second one is using lacing uh, uh, repellent materials uh, in the area around uh, uh, your libraries or archival materials. Uh, regarding to resistance storage devices, uh, there is like a recommendation for making uh, book cases and shelves uh, made of materials that have like uh, resistance to uh, biodegradation factors. Uh, for example, uh, using sandalwood. Which is this one? The first one. And the Chinese fair, the second one. And the camphor wood. And the gayanku and uh, 
polywania wood as well and uh, catalpa wood so this all these materials have like aromatic uh, substances that prevent uh, uh, prevent uh, documents or, or keeping insects away from attacking uh, papers or any documents that you keep you keeping inside uh, this material uh, regarding to placing uh, repellent materials, uh, interestingly, there is two uh, animal resources have been used uh, specifically in India, which is uh, first uh, peacock feathers and the snack skin or slow. Uh, these two materials have like aromatic substances, uh, makes it acts as a, a repellent materials. Uh, regarding to the skin, uh, snack skin, I mean during uh, a matting season between uh, snakes, this is uh, skin covered the, the males and after the season uh, it's lifted it out in the area and the Indians go to collect it from, uh, from the area around them and put them in between the documents and uh, and, and manuscripts and, and books, but I mean, till now we don't we don't know exactly which substance or which we know it is aromatic materials. But I mean, yeah, it need to be like to test it and someone like uh, do more research about this kind of material. Uh, the second, uh, the third uh, animal sources is hopupati. These methods also have been mentioned by North African bookbinders, which I mentioned before, in Ishbeli. He usually burn the whole body of, of Hopu pear, like a fumigation process, uh, to prevent uh, uh, the manuscript from uh, termite attacking. I'm not able uh, actually to find like a scientific explanation for choosing specifically this pair. Uh, the, the only, uh, the only uh, reason I found, like in, in a modern context, modern res research context, is this pair has uh, a gland called brain gland. This gland, uh, it like provide uh, excretions, reduce uh, the activity of feather degradation. So it has like uh, antibacterial uh, 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 properties, but I don't know if it is like if it is that, if it is that was the reason or not. I mean, it is need like modern research to clarify the reason for using this uh, this bird specifically for placing the materials uh, as well. There is like many many plant uh, sources had been placing around the area of, of archival materials or libraries. I had chosen uh, two examples. One of them is like sweet flag, which is all, also has like aromatic uh, substances in the root and leaves. And uh, there is another famous example, which is neem tree. And there is a lot of research that has been done on this, uh, on, the, on neem tree. And it has been been proved that it has like insecticidal and it's insect repellent and antifungal properties. Uh, for the discussion, all these methods it based mainly about using some herbs or uh, some like animal uh, materials. Uh, this method also like. Uh, we are passed down from generation to generation, mainly depending on like trials and errors from generation to generation as well. Uh, it is a rich, a rich source for knowledge of the ancient technologies. Uh, These materials act as insecticides uh, or uh, insect repellents with a various action of mechanism 
some of them we know quite well uh, the mechanism of, of these materials, and some we don't know uh, about the mechanism, how, how they act against like uh, uh, fungi and bacteria and insects. Uh, this material is also mainly harmless to the human, but also like uh, not all natural stuff is uh, non-poisonous, so we have to be careful about using this stuff. All this stuff is like easily accessible and cheap, so you could apply by anyone in any area. Non-polluted material. Uh, it doesn't need any requirement or sophisticated equipment to apply uh, this kind of materials. Uh, we could, I mean, now uh, put it in like uh, beneficial, uh, put some beneficial in, in, in the modern time by putting them like in a, a modern context, like if you could like extract some materials from them and test them again, apply uh, them on paper uh, to see if they are working or not. And finally, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Short, yeah. No, that was, I think that was very yeah. interesting. Mm. What sort of damage do silverfish do? Because we tend to say silverfish do no damage. It's like a surface damage for silverfish, like making some holes. But it is not deep or, uh, or severe, it looks like a termite or, or beetles. But it caused like a tunnels, but in, on, the, on the surface of, of, of paper itself. Yeah, okay, that's I mean, it just reminds I don't know if I'm right about this, but I seem to remember in uh, some of you have read um, the, the book God of Small Things. And I'm sure there's a passage in there where she talks about the silverfish mm. taking away the text in the yeah. books in the library. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, have a look at that novel, if, yeah. if any of you, God of Small Things. Uh, but to talk about, I'm sure there is a passage about the silverfish. Yeah, it, it caused uh, a and, damage. And, and just will take that, you know, and so the words have been sort of yeah, yeah. affected by the by yeah. the sort of journey that these silverfish. They make like a tunnels in. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the only reason why I say this is because my aunt had silverfish in her house, and she mm -hmm. had a, a house that was 300 years old, mm -hmm. and it was generally said, oh, well, they're there, but they don't do any harm. Mm -hmm. And then we discovered them in our house in Sedgefield, and she'd obviously, on her clothes, mm. brought, transferred them from one house to the other, so every time we saw one, we killed it. Yeah, yeah. But we never saw any evidence uh. of, of damage. That doesn't mean to say that... Maybe it's in different countries. Isn't yeah. It? I, mean, I, I think but where it's warm, it must, it must be. It it must be. be. It most Certainly of, not in our Yeah, most of, most of insects like... Uh, it causes severe damage if it is like a hot and hot weather. Mm -hmm. So definitely for silverfish, it causes like a damage, but it's like on the surface. Like a worm going through the book, or, or yeah, taking, if it's on the surface, it's it, taking away. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, it's it's caused like uh, a holes, but it's not in deep. Mm -hmm. Some like so surface tunnels, sub yeah. some surface tunnels. Yeah. So if there is like uh, yeah. writing or it could like disappear mm -hmm. by. You. And for particularly silverfish, you could find it anywhere. Same with cockroaches. Um, it has been in schools where we've had cockroaches. Yeah. And I hate them absolutely. Yeah. Because I never thought they did any damage. They just were horrible. Yeah. They, they would go up the side of the backboard and disappear. Yeah, yeah. Or you would be looking at the shelf and there would be two yeah. antennas. Yeah. <laughs> or in an old house in Brighton Grove, mm. they, were, they were notorious in that part of the city, they would spread out on the carpet when it was dark and if you put a light on, they would all gravitate back into the fire. Mm. Mm. But I think we are talking, for me anyway, talking about this combination of climate yes, and, the difference, and different it? sort of uh, different factors, the, like you say, the, the fungi mm. and the mm. and the insects, and um, I mean just you know uh, uh, just sort of 
I turn it to, to, to my, you know, some, some of my own research of, of the last few years mm. of the fact that, you know, these, uh, this expedition that, that had left Amsterdam in 1596 mm. with this cargo of, of Renaissance prints that mm. then were found in the ice yeah. after 300 years mm. and, a, and books that are still, you can still read the, yeah. the, the information, the, yeah. a history book, a Bible, a song book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presumably because of the lack of humidity in that yeah. in that Arctic environment, so we have to kind of take in all these facts. Not just about taking that insect to this place or that place; it's mm. a combination. Mm -hmm. And certainly, when the time I've spent in India, that the cockroaches have a very different kind of impact on the environment than the one might think mm. in in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, something that I was quite interested. But so if you could, sorry. That's sorry, okay. That's okay. No, I was thinking about the sort of. You know, you talk about the t turmeric having having this um, preventative effect. You know, how long does that last? Is it something that that that, that is would need to be kind of refreshed, or would it be put in, you know, between the leaves as you were you were mentioning, and and then that would that would last for several decades or several centuries? How how long do you think this this Okay. has a preventative effect for, because that's quite an interesting mm. factor, isn't yeah. it, to me anyway. It's for turmeric, it, it was mainly used in, in India, mm. but there is no specific date for using it. Not the but, date, yeah. from the date when it was put, when it was placed on the paper, yeah. how long would it be effective for? Mm. I so think would it still be effective now? What I mean, it? since you put it in the paper, it's, it's like... It remains effective. It remains effect. Right. But I think if it is any, 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 any substance, I mean, has like aromatic or like mm. stuff. I think by age it will lose this mm. uh, this properties. Like uh, so, it will gradually become less effective. Less effect, I think, mm -hmm. become less effect. Uh, regarding to uh, the cockroach itself, do you know the, st the stool of the cockroach? It's made like a like coma on, on, on the paper itself. Mm. Mm. So it's like it's 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 make like uh, a lot of Yes. Like uh, uh, dots or like a comma, like a yeah. the stool of a cockroach itself. Mm -hmm. Maybe cover the whole paper itself mm -hmm. if it's like a lot of cockroach. Mm -hmm. do, you, yeah. do you use things like um, pyrethrum dust at all? What? Pyrethrum. It, yeah. It's a, a flower that we have and we find it controls insects. Yeah. Do you use anything like that? For four plants, I, I, I give you like two. You give us the, the uh, two plants, but there is a lot of many oh, plants. Yeah, yeah. Had been used in India or China, mm -hmm. a lot of, of, of plants mm -hmm. had been used. It's interesting because I think wormwood was definitely used um, over here, but I've never heard of bitter. Oh, what's bitter apple? Do you have the um, uh, Latin name for the bitter apple? I could give you like the Latin yeah. name for it. Yeah. I'd be interested. In yeah, it, it has been mentioned only. Uh, I found it in a manuscript that uh, had been written uh, by a bookbinder in the 12th century. Mm. He's specifically from Tunisia, but he moved from uh, Tunisia to Morocco to, to Tunisia again. Uh, and this manuscript is in, uh, in the National Archive of, of Morocco. Oh, yeah. So he, he gave like advice about using these two, uh, uh, two, two materials by adding the Joseph's those two plants to the starch. Mm -hmm. uh, but he mentioned mainly to prevent uh, termites attack. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and to be fair, these two, two plants specifically need a modern research yeah. uh, right. about to prove if it is like works or not. Mm -hmm. I've heard of wormwood, so yes. the wormwood because people used yes. it yeah. to be with clouds. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For more wood, I, 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 until till now, I mean, we have a garden in, uh, in Upper Egypt. So we, because there is a lot of s snakes uh, around the area, so we put uh, the old wood in, in a small pockets and in the corner of the garden to keep the snacks, snakes away oh, from. Really? Uh, <laughs> from, from <laughs> yeah, yeah. Behind yeah. it in the kitchen, you get less, you know, you get flies coming in and circling around the light and things when it's what we do when it's um, warm weather and if you hang wormwood if apparently they don't like it. Yeah yeah. Fly One interesting thing is like here. Oh, sorry. Yeah this sweet flag for example. 
in medieval time, they used to, to put the, the leaves of this plant uh, in the floors of churches. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to refresh the air itself and give like a, a, a good smell. And in the same time to keep uh, insect uh, and the stuff away from like, mm -hmm. from this place. There is a, a fantastic application, I mean application had been done by, uh, by this plant. But it, it is, a, is a very interesting thing, uh, which I assume about how 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 do they know how, how did they know about the benefits of dyeing paper, for example, mm -hmm. with uh, the Chinese uh, dye, which is uh, it's come from uh, Hangubu or uh, Amor cork tree. Mm -hmm. So I had I had, I had assumption. I don't know if it's true or not. Like the history of of dyeing. Styles mm. is like you could say like three thousand, four thousand. I mean, ages before mm. the invention of uh, of paper itself. Mm. So could they, for example, uh, notice that the textile is preserved mm. yes. by dyeing uh, by by using this specific dyes? Mm. Then when they notice that, yeah. they, yeah. they start to uh, to. Uh, it's, it's my assumption, I don't know if it's true or not. Then I started to use it for, for paper itself. Well, it's certainly clear, for me, there's a clear relationship between plant uh, textile dyes and, and paper dyes yeah. in different cultures. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. obviously, you know, we're thinking about the, the widespread use, like you say, of, of cloth and, and clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, it, that, seems to, that seems to kind of fit very, very well with that. Yeah. 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 What, what color is the um, dye from that? Uh, from the cork, uh, yeah. um, Amur cork tree. It's a yellow one. <coughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a yellow one. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if you wear in England the yellow clothes yeah. in summer, yeah. you get covered by insects. So I would imagine if the yellow dye they used was one that insects didn't like, they would notice the difference of the insects behaving. Ah. Okay. Maybe, but the insects yeah. might be different that we have here. Yes, I'm just yeah. saying that yeah. it, I'm sure that it, that's yeah. one way that they could have perhaps, with one particular dye, insects came and sat on you and another particular dye and kept mm. away. Mm. I mean, the other, other part of this that strikes me in, in the kind of links and connections is, is the relationship between, between dyes and between, between plants that are dying plants, yeah. plants that are dying and medicinal plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, obviously there, there's been, you know, s centuries upon centuries of, of, of knowledge handed down yeah, yeah. in terms of the medicinal plants. And sometimes I think, you know, something like that's an antiseptic mm -hmm. that would be used, you know, for medicinal purposes. Yeah, yeah. This is would then be used as a dying plant. And certainly, mm -hmm. again, I refer to some of the, the mm -hmm. things that I'm looking at at the moment, a, a treatise called Hortus Malabaricus, mm. which was um, written in um, sort of the yeah, 1600s um, in looking at the medicinal plants of southern India. Yeah, yeah. And it was written over a period of, of 30 years. And when you, you look, I mean, it was translated actually for the first time in 2003 into English. Mm. But when you look at the different, I'm sure you'd find it really interesting if you haven't seen it. Yeah. When, but when you look at the different plants and the usages, it, it sort of moves between, they're, they're, it's supposed to be around medicinal plants, the whole treatise, 12 mm. volumes, mm. medicinal plants, but it talks about plants that are used for dyeing, mm. plants that are used for, you know, for, for, uh, mm. for textiles, for in, plants in, are used... And specifically in, in India? In India, in southern India, in Kerala. Really? Uh. So I should, let me have a conversation. Okay, about it, yeah. But uh, I yeah. think that link between medicine and, mm. and, and, and dyes mm. and is textiles... It, is it a book or article, I think? It's a, it's a very, very... It's a 12-volume book. Ah, really? Yeah. Uh, it's good, inter interesting. We should have that kind of Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, also, I mean, regarding to your speech now about medicinal purposes mm. of some dyes, this one, this dye, is a more cork uh, tree, the dye, it is in the top 50 medicinal drugs in China yeah. for centuries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It had been used like to treat a lot of like uh, diseases, but I don't know, I don't remember now exactly which disease exactly. I mean, 
but it's in the 50 top. But the same uh, with, with yes. turmeric. I don't know if any of you Tum followed, as well. followed. There was, um, I'm sure I'm right in saying this. I'm not really, I'm being, being filmed <laughs> to uh, make this statement. Uh, but that there's a court case between, um, the, uh, I think it was between uh, somebody in Germany and the and India mm -hmm. that um, the, somebody in Germany wanted to patent turmeric for its medicinal thing. Did you hear about this? Yeah. For its mm. medicinal qualities. Yeah, yeah, it has. And yet, it's been used in India for yeah, definitely it has centuries a, and yeah, centuries, yeah, yeah. and mm. so it's yeah, yeah. you know people are kind of recognizing mm. these these benefits and um, mm. but like. We, we know we can find them, like you say, tra Chinese treatise yeah. book. Uh, yeah. The same with Hortus Manabaricus, you know. It's, uh, For turmeric, uh, turmeric as well. It talks about turmeric. I was like, had a discussion with uh, a guy from Sri Lanka, mm. and he told me about a very interesting piece of information. They told, he told me that they are killed now, uh, they, they, they bring the turmeric mm. and put it in water and stir the. Mm. It, mm -hmm. and splash it in front of houses mm -hmm. and in front of temples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, definitely the, uh, the color, the, uh, the yellow color has like a link with Buddhist religion, mm -hmm. but also they are doing that with the belief that turmeric kills germic, germs, uh, so that's... Like a, a descent. Uh, yeah, so they are, if you, if you, he told he said to me that if you, if you come to Sri Lanka, you will find a lot of yellow color in front of houses and temples mm -hmm. through splashing uh, the water in front of these places. Mm -hmm. yeah. So different. Really? Yes, the turmeric color uh, is some uh, some high in the in Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure which kind of um, molecular works for, but we sometimes drink turmeric water before drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. Because if you did like that, you don't have any heavy headache after drinking something. Ah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> uh. That's interesting. Yeah, but regarding, do, do you mean uh, wiping the documents with closed diet with turmeric? Actually, I don't have any idea the document says. I'm really uh, confident with the document says. Yeah. 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 They dye in clothes and use it to warp it with uh, the document, valid, valuable documents and, and yeah, books yeah. with this clothes and keep it for, for, some, mm. for some times. Which is all very interesting. I mean, during some specific periods in China, they usually, uh, the official documents, which has like, a, 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 have, 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 has some value. Uh, they using they using the yellow dye. Uh, they using uh, paper uh, dyed with mm. with philodendron uh, dye mm. because they know quite well it's, it will live for a long time. So uh, any official important documents they usually use this kind of uh, mm. of, of paper. And and there is also they has a, a, a different kind of yellow paper, but with wax. So they're using a specific wax mm -hmm. uh, to put it on, on paper, and they are using like iron tool, flat one, mm -hmm. to apply apply this wax on. Uh, but it is not uh, not dye; it's just uh, an application uh, on the paper itself. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 The sort of minerals that you mentioned about the the art, this um, ornament, um, and some of the other minerals, I'm, it, it comes to mind that they're also the, these are also minerals that are used to paint with. Mm. Mm. You know, like I, you know, I I don't know if you've come across this, but certainly when when I was working in in, in Kyoto in the studio there, we used. This kind of open and grounded, it. yeah. And, and it's a mystic, you know. If any of you, yeah. you haven't seen it, an extraordinarily beautiful yellow yeah. color. I mean, no. just, just very, very beautiful. But I, I wondered whether, even, even with that, they were aware that if they used the color as a, mm. the, the mineral as a, as a, as a pigment, yeah. Or as, as you know, to, as a, as a, as a color, mm. not really ground as a pigment, but some of these other certainly. Mm red lead and copper sulfate used as a pigment, mm -hmm. um, whether that was also mm -hmm. helpful to yeah. repair. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Whether yeah. the actual paint itself, maybe they perhaps sometimes realized that it was a, yeah. a, mm -hmm. it, it was a preventative material. Yeah. I don't know. What it's arsenic. It's, it's arsenic. It's, it's a very, a very poisonous mm -hmm. material. Yeah, we were well, using it all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, but it makes you wonder. And Rialgar, Rialgar, But if they'd got paintings with different sections and some had been eaten away and, and not others, that could have also mm -hmm. just, yeah, just so makes you wonder about these kind of cross references yeah. and sort of links between, like we say, medicine, textiles, yeah, paper, yeah. Yeah. pigment. Yeah, you yeah. know, and that yeah. there wasn't just like one one thing that it was kind of began to understand that this material had these particular qualities, and you could use them in different yeah, yeah. in different ways. Uh, but mm. the way of using it is it began with like textile or medicine or mm. it, do you know this link? This is this is tough. Mm. Uh, my my feeling how, how, is how medicine because that was me, the most do you urgent. Think yeah. Medicine first. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I've got no grab, but I think that's what hmm. that's what there seems to be the most evidence and documentation is around med medicinal plants. Medicinal plants, yeah. And that would be the first first the thing people would be most anxious about, wouldn't it? About health. Mm -hmm. So that seems to make sense, but it's just an mm -hmm. assumption. Very interesting. Yeah. Have we got any any sort of other things people would like to raise? In? Or How comments? many of these methods are still used? Uh, till now. Till now, yeah. So if, if people are making paper in North Africa, Asia, do they still use these processes? We, or have do, been we don't sold? have our, our paper in North Africa at all. We lost the, the craft since like the second, the first half of the 17th century. Okay. So we have no longer uh, paper in North Africa at all. But some 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 missiles, which like uh, snack uh, skin or uh, decoc uh, feather, yeah, they still till now use in in, in India. They are using till now in India. Mm -hmm. They are using turmeric till now in India. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. and Nepal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so. These poisonous um, ones. Um, such as the arsenic derivative and, and so on. Um, did you find any evidence for um, um, people working in bookbinding having a, um, an early death? You know, yeah. if, if it's another issue, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's another issue, yeah. yeah. There is no mention for like. I, no, yeah. I, I think it, it, it stands to reason that that would have. Yeah. Like like a lot of these materials that yeah. we, yeah. even in a sort of contemporary age, we mm -hmm. we realise that we shouldn't be using them in. Well, like the white lead on the end. All sorts of ah, things. Yeah. All sorts of things. Yeah. We, we so, yeah. used not so long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think this idea about sort of more of a kind of discussion between. You know what's what's used now, and between different cultures, and yeah. used within different cultures. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this c comparison of different, um, mm. these different treaties would be, yeah. would be really, uh, you know, another conversation. Mm. And traveling itself. I mean, yeah. for a technique to travel from place to another place, mm. 
a technique had been used in China, then moved from China to Europe, yeah. and from North Africa to Asia. Yeah. It's the, this link of stuff yeah. like... Mm. It would be interesting to have like a time yeah. line yeah. And, and plot various things on, and I think then you'd have a map. connection. Yes, a map. But, but, he, but if you had a long timeline first, mm. and, and plotted things, the earliest known this and that and the other, and cross, mm. cross-disciplinary there, then you could put it on the map and see how it spread. Mm. Uh, and, and my thesis now, I'm describing them chronologically. Yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm following, uh, I mean, this technique, Yes. When exactly it has started? When exactly? And, and from here travel to here and here. Yes. So I'm, I'm trying to find mm. some uh, some link mm. about. Mm. So I think that would be really yeah, interesting. Yeah. But it's needs like a big project, like for yeah. historians and yes. uh, some That's people exciting. from different backgrounds, like mm. uh, archaeologists and historians. Mm. And scientists.